Okay, everyone. Now we come to the part that is perhaps covering some things that you have studied in bus law and also including on termination of contract that you just covered in the previous lecture. Um, this part is not really from the book because it's comprising of things that you have studied in termination of contract in our previous lecture and also some things that you studied in bus law on breach of contract or pit sanya or pit ngun kai sanya um, many people get confused by these two things some people think that they are the same some people like to think that once you get the right to terminate the contract as we talked about in the previous lecture then you terminate the contract and once you terminate the contract or you lurk sanya you do not have any more right to claim for the breach of contract or vice versa the other way around some people think that if you claim for the breach of contract can you actually go ahead to terminate the con contract at the same time right once there's a breach of contract you claim for a breach of contract in the courts but let me just add some things here yeah but you claim for a breach of contract in the court but can you also at the same time terminate the contract would terminating the contract not allow you to claim for the breach of contract so these two factors all right they seems to be pointing at the same thing which is there's some sort of a breach in the contract all right or in some way the current contract has been terminated okay and because of that this one cuts the contract this one agrees allows for you to claim for a breach of contract a breach of a of a condition in the contract and there seems to be some sort of a, of an overlapping simply on the basis of okay there is a breach for example the seller doesn't deliver the goods or the purchaser doesn't pay all right maybe you want to file a claim for a breach of contract but does filing a claim for a breach of contract prevents or prohibits you to terminate the contract in the first place because you'll be thinking that if you terminate then the contract has been dead you can't claim for a breach of contract right all right okay and some people may like to think that once you terminate it then then you cannot go ahead to claim for a breach so this brings a lot of confusion to people all right and i'm sure you have this kind of question in your brain but you don't really ask and you try to look at it differently but at the same time there's you feel that there's some sort of interconnection between these two so i would like to clarify that for you now all right on the distinction between the two and if there are any links between the two how they link together specifically how they link together okay let's start from termination of contract first where we left off in the last lecture Right, termination of contract or kanle sanya. Right, you can terminate as we talked about in the previous lecture. You can terminate if you have the right to terminate. Right, have the right to do so. Have the right to terminate. Yes, under those any or any on one of those four things, four situation we talked about in the previous lecture. If yes, you can go ahead to terminate the contract. All right. Breach of contract is somebody breaching a condition in the contract. Does not perform a condition in the contract. Does terminating of the contract prevents, prohibit, stops you from claiming a breach? Answer is no. Why? Because termination of contract and breach of contract are two very separate things. They are completely separate things. All right. This one cuts the contract, brings the contract to an end, kills the contract, terminate, lurks, and yeah. This one 
is did not perform a certain condition in the contract breach of a condition in the contract all right so by terminating the contract as a result of having a right to terminate to the contract all right as a result of having the, a right to terminate the contract does not prevent one party to the contract to at the same time claim for a breach of contract all right or proceed with claiming for a breach of contract which is what i'm going to explain soon but for now just know that this does not stop this because there are two completely different concepts all right this one ends the contract kills the contract brings the contract to a date point this one is there is a non-performance of a certain duty a certain obligation in the contract or a breach of a specific condition in the contract now breach of contract when there's a breach of contract as we talked about last week right you cannot go ahead and terminate immediately it doesn't give you this right this immediate right to terminate the contract right what you have to do first you have to issue a notice to the other party to remedy the breach this we covered in the previous lecture already right and you also have to give a reasonable period for the other party to remedy the breach you have to give a written notice to the other party to say that you did not deliver the things to me for example please deliver to me within another seven days okay reasonable period to remedy now if they don't remedy right as we talked about before if they do not remedy during that time if the purchaser uh, if, if, uh, if the seller didn't deliver the things to you or if the purchaser doesn't pay up during that period to remedy all right then you have the right to terminate so let me put a get a red pen back here okay to represent termination of contract so if not remedy all right you have you have the right right if not remedy you also have the right to claim for you also have the right to not claim <laughs> to terminate the contract all right you can proceed to terminate the contract at the same time you can also file a claim in the court the court of first instance what is the court of first instance the student who wasn't here in the first class please go and listen to the lecture in the first class all right if the breach is not remedy within the reasonable period that you gave the law doesn't specify how long is the reasonable period the law doesn't specify that it's up to you but of course it cannot be 24 hours as a reasonable period normally people give seven days 14 days all right now if after that seven days or 14 days the breach is not remedied not remedied you can terminate the contract at the same time you can also file a claim for a breach of contract at the court of first instance all right on san chanton the court of first instance if you don't know this go back to the very first lecture i don't want to repeat things and put the people that was here in the first lecture to sleep all right the court of first instance as we talked about in the first lecture there's a civil division and a criminal division there's a civil department and a criminal department for breach of contract all right it's a civil department at the court of first instance okay it's the civil department at the court of first instance you file the claim there all right once the claim has been filed claim for breach of contract has been filed there all right the court would schedule a date for the hearing of the case to begin hearing of the case means that the judge in the court would consider the testimony or entire you call you call the high gun of the witnesses payan right and also the court the judge in the court would consider the evidence 
the lot time produced by both parties to the contract. After the court has considered this, the judge in the court, nah, specifically the judge in the court of first instance, civil department, has considered this. The court of first instance will make a decision. Now, the, deci the decision from the court of the first instance can go either way. The court could say, ah, after considering the testimony of the witnesses, after considering all the evidence, the court could say, yes, there is a breach of contract. Okay, the judge in that court of first instance would order the party who breached to pay damages. Okay, damages. Car say hi, to pay damages. This is ordered by the court, by the judge in the court. Or the judge in the court could say, no breach. My be Sanya. There's no breach of contract. In which case, that judge would dismiss the claim. Would dismiss the claim for the breach of contract. Yok Fong, you call in Thai. Yok Fong. Alright. Now, whatever the decision, whatever way the decision goes, if any party to the case, alright, whether it's the person who filed the claim or the person who's been filed, okay, is unhappy with the decision of the court of the first instance. Okay, is unhappy with the judge's decision in the court of first instance. That person can always appeal. Uton, as we talked about in the our first class. Alright, you can always appeal to the next level of the court, appeal to the appeal court. We talked about this also in our first lecture. People who wasn't here, please go and listen in that first lecture. Alright? <clears throat> so that's the way to go. Okay, so please don't confuse yourself at the same time that just because there is a, 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 a claim in the court, all right, for breach of contract, you cannot terminate. You cannot kill the contract. No, no, you can. Termination of contract and breach of contract are two separate concepts. They're not the same. All right, though there are some overlapped with each other at times. All right, and the same thing here. If you terminate the contract, that doesn't mean once you terminate, once you kill the contract, you cannot file the claim for breach of contract. No, you can. All right. Okay, so um, what else is there? Is there anything else I need to tell you about this? All right, so what you study in bus law, all right, when there is a contract, any kind of contract, sales contract, lease contract, an international business later on, we talk about international sale and purchase contract, international distribution contract, one party doesn't perform, that party has breach, all right, one party claims, all right, that's the claim for the breach of contract is to be made at the court of first instance. The court of first instance is what is what is the name of that court in Thailand. In other countries, they also have that first, uh, that first level court as well. Though they use other names. Some countries, like in Singapore, they call it the state courts. Or some places, they call it the magistrate court. Alright. Okay. But it's the first court in that very first level of the hierarchy of the courts, as we explained in the very first lecture. All right. Now, there's one more thing that I need to clear up. If you go back to the lecture on penalty, the lecture on penalty, all right, deposit and penalty, in there, in that lecture, and also in the book, okay, uh, let me have a look at it, where exactly in the book, uh, so you know exactly, okay, on page 31, alright, 6.2, 6.2, on page 31 of the book, 
And I, in that last line, last sentence in 6.2 on page 31 of the book, it says the deposit, A deposit secures the performance of the contract while a party compensates for the damages that arise. Now many students read this and they look at, they look at this and they think it's the same thing or, they, or, or not, they get confused. The answer is this not the same thing. Damages here, if you look carefully, it is ordered by the court to pay. The court orders it to pay the damages. Alright, for example, the judge in the court could say, ah, you did not deliver the things. You breached the contract of sale. How much is the, is the price of the goods? Let's say the price of the goods is 100,000 baht. Then the damages that the court would decide would be no more than the 100,000 baht. The damages here in Thai, they call cars here high. Right? But the damages we talked about in 6.2 on page 31 of the book, when we are talking about penalty, penalty, the damages in penalty is not something, it's not something ordered by the court. It's something that is agreed between the contractual parties. How much should be the amount of prop or penalty right to be paid when there is a breach so put it simply if you're still confused listen carefully if you're still confused between penalty damages and these damages listen carefully the damages in penalty are damages or cars here high that the contractual parties agree in the contract to pay it is an amount stated, right? 500,000 baht, 1 million baht, whatever is the amount agreed between the contractual parties to pay, to be the PR prop when there is a breach. The damages here, right, provided by the, the court order, by the judge in the court, is an amount, is an amount of money according to the decision by the judge in the court. Okay, so you could get a situation where, give a real life example. Let's say the seller didn't deliver. Let's go back to our, our, just the example I just gave. Let's say you have a seller who didn't deliver and the price of the product is 100,000 baht. Right? Let's say the judge in the case decides that there is a breach and the judge orders damages to be paid at 100,000 baht because the price of the goods is 100,000 baht. But, 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 in the sales contract agreed between the seller and the purchaser, there is a condition in there where it says if anybody breach, either the seller or the purchaser breach, the person who breached the contract has to pay penalty of 50,000 baht. Then, the seller in this case would have to pay the 100,000 baht ordered by the court plus the 50,000 as the penalty. Okay, I hope that clarifies. That's all for this part.